We're joining us is Steve Berry, a former Top Gear host. Steve, I categorised cyclists into three main sort of horrifying groups earlier. One being the middle-aged men who, uh, you know, create... Like really pronounced. I saw scenes wearing lycra beyond the age of 50 when they really shouldn't and they're usually found in pelotons in the countryside thinking they're in the Tour de France. The other are the hipsters with their bags of quinoa who probably also are members of Extinction Rebellion. The final category are the yobbos with hoodies and masks who are trying to nick your mobile phone on Oxford Street. Uh, is there another category of cyclists oh, which aren't got bad? We've got no shortage of that third category here in Manchester, let me tell you. We've also got the scourge of the rented electric scooter, oh. which seems to be mainly stewed, and they are almost always on the pavement. Although quite why they go into the road, I have no idea. I think Patricia might be cracking on a bit and finding the pace of London life a bit too much for her when she's saying she was nearly hit by one. And can we just say that the difference between a pedestrian nearly being hit by a cyclist is probably a shopping bag strewn all over the floor and maybe somebody gets a broken collarbone, whereas the difference between a cyclist and a motor vehicle is usually the cyclist ends up dead. So can we get a bit of proportion into this? I'm quite how cyclists are ruining society, I've no idea. I worked in London well, for I eight years... I can give you some reasons if you want, world. Steve. I can give you some reasons. I mean, they, they cycle around, holier than thou, uh, reporting us, taking pictures of everyone else. You're breaking the, you're, you're breaking the law. They're hypocrites. Because have you ever seen a cyclist stop at a red light? It is, the, it's their ethos, it's their philosophy that's annoying. They you think they're at the top of the scale. They think they are the bastions of morality and they're not. You're talking about it as though there's one group of people. Just because Jon Snow and Jeremy Vine get a lot of publicity about their brand of cycling, there are all kinds of people, mate, who aren't on your salary and can't afford to drive a car around a city like Manchester. Yeah, well, they're probably London. not all high well, horse and morally, mo morality. I have no bashes, idea. Yeah, but I then... lived in London. Yeah. I worked in the same building as you, and I cycled the six miles there and cycled the six miles back. And look at me. I'm 60. I wear lycra, and you know what? I look great in it. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, well that so. remains to be seen, Steve. You'll have to show us a picture. <laughs> yeah, picture, please. <laughs> I will send you some photographs, my friend. Yeah, OK, mate, you're on. You're on. No, but, I mean, you, you, I, get, I take your point. I'm not sure they're ruining society, but as I say... Uh, these ones that go around, and then, of course, you're quite right. So a lot of cyclists, decent people, just cycling around, sometimes for financial reasons. Good point. Uh, but you know the ones we're talking about, the ones who go around with, with cycle uh, cameras, you know, taking pictures of, you know, so if, if anyone's on their phone, you know, the little class sneaks reporting them to the police, whereas when they come to a red light, they just cycle straight through. Since when did this group of cyclists, these lycra louts, appoint themselves the moral arbiters of society, the rest of us? Why have they done that? Since since the white bicycles started appearing in our towns and cities at places where cyclists have been killed by vehicles, can I say again, the reality, if you think the holier than thou, the reality of an interaction well, They probably wouldn't get killed if they didn't keep busting the red lights, would they? <laughs> ...isn't such a big deal. I tell you what, mate, I will make you a video. I'll ride around Manchester for an hour on my bicycle and I'll try to obey the laws of the road. You can't. You can't cycle in this country and do what it says you should do in the highway code. Do you know what it is out there, mate? It's dog eat dog, and I ain't getting eaten. If I've got to go on the pavement, if I've got to go through a light or whatever, to avoid being seriously injured or killed, we're not talking about something trivial. What about the, what about the motorists that have been killed due to cyclists got, going through red lights? It's, it's, it's on not, both feet here, Steve. <laughs> there's not... Right, OK. There's... OK. How much bigger is a car than it was 30 years ago? Much bigger. I was at an event the other week, a car event, and there was a 911, 1993 Porsche parked next to a new one. Try parking a Mini, a 1978 Mini, <laughs> next to a new one. Cars are much, much bigger. Sometimes you've just got to get out of their way. And it's more important, mate, that somebody doesn't end up dead or in hospital 
then it'd be might go through. Yeah, but the yeah, people who could end up dead and in hospital if, might be the motorists. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned about cars if getting... They do, I'm glad you mentioned my cars do. getting bigger. This is one of my gripes for the past 10 years. I'm a small car person. I've got a little Mazda MX-5 and it's dwarfed by even like, you know, the BMW version of a Mini. But I mean, do you think the problem is, I mean, looking at that, looking at cycling in this country in general, that we just don't have a clear system on our roads and our infrastructure no, of how to exactly. accommodate everybody. They've managed it well in the Netherlands, but here, you know, when they start narrowing roads to build a cycle path, it creates congestion. Uh, we just, you know, nothing makes sense. You know, there's sort of some cyclists who really do have due care and attention with lights and reflective stuff and helmets. And then there's others who are just like riding all over the place with delivery boxes and, you know, acting like maniacs. And actually, maybe we just need to take a look at the whole lot of it and figure out how we can share our roads better. And it can't be policed. It, again, Patricia, what she was saying, she was saying, the police don't, to see, don't seem to do anything about it. So I thought, well, what can they do about it? Are they going to come out arrest with the, Arrest the cyclists that break the lights. How about that? Go on, mate. Go huh? on, mate. How are you going to stop them? Huh? Well, arrest them. What are you going to do? Are you going to get a big net on a stick? Well, that sounds like a plan. Like, sounds like a plan. Device. I like that idea. Yeah, let's do that. Maybe it's all about number <laughs> plates for bicycles. Going to have, yeah. If we're going to have responsible cycling here, yeah. the, the example that always gets brought up is in the Netherlands or Scandinavian countries. And do you know what they have? Uh -huh. They have a consensus. Yeah. They have a consensus that says, we're all going to use these thoroughfares, let's call them that, uh -huh. because it's pedestrians, it's cyclists, it's delivery drivers, yeah. it's motorcyclists, it's car drivers. We've all got to use these thoroughfares. Let's try and share the space. Yeah. And until we agree that we're going to do that, in a way that acknowledges that the least threatening person using those that space is a pedestrian, and the most threatening is great big wagons, and we all agree that there need to be tougher tests and more checks on the people that use the giant dangerous vehicles mm -hmm. to move around, unless we agree that we're going to share this space, we're going to be in conflict, and the people that are going to suffer the most are the most vulnerable. Pedestrians and cyclists. Yeah, all right, Steve. Well, Steve, I still say so uh, a lot of cyclists are pains in the backsides. You know uh, but, Steve, uh, you thank know, you very right much, mate. Backside. Thank you very much, yeah. mate. Good to talk to you. You know, I think Steve the, the, way to sort, the way to sort this all...